Hey everyone, it's someone here. Let's talk about uh, Destruction Warlock. Let's start talking about Warlock. Now, Destruction Warlock hasn't gotten a great deal of changes, say, in comparison to Affliction, which actually gotten a couple of fundamental changes in the way you approach this mech. Destruction is pretty much the same. You still have your Chaos Bolts, you still have all of that playstyle. So, if you like it in BF5, if you like it now, you're gonna like it here in Shadowlands, but there are some clear quote-unquote nerfs, some uh, some different directions on uh, on a destruction to where your Kiss Bolt is not the super super big ability. Well, it's still your bread and butter for sure, but there are some clear directions, especially in our talents now, where Kiss Bolt is a little bit weaker, I should say. But we do have legendaries and we will have conduits which are not active yet in um, in Shadowlands. But I'll make sure to update that uh, once they are out and do a dedicated video for that as a Warlock video overall for conduits. But so let's just uh, dive into it and talk about baseline changes again. No big changes. Our spells are pretty much work mechanically the same. But we do have the addition of curses uh, for all warlock specs. We have curse of tongues. We have curse of exhaustion. Curse of rec recklessness. Curse of the weakness, and they all have their situational uses. Like curse of weakness is pretty much always useful on bosses or trash, uh, tough trash mobs. You can help out your tank, tank in that way, so it's extra utility. Uh, one thing I do have to say is that on Curse of Thungs, 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 it's good. The issue is, with it is that I've tried on tough trash mobs that have, that had rather, really nasty spell attacks or on bosses and they are immune to it. Now, this could be a beta th thing. Could be definitely be a better thing, but of course, of the weakness works all the time. Be bosses, be trash mobs, be random world enemies. They, it always works. But Curse of Thungs, there's a clear definition on certain mobs that are immune to it. Now, I can understand because 30% is a little bit powerful, but that does remove some of the meaning of meaningfulness out of that ability, of the utility, uh, utility-wise of that ability, right? Because if you can only use it on meaningless mobs, well, it ceases to be interesting and useful. So, yeah, I did find that odd, but maybe, maybe it's a beta thing. Besides that, we also gotten baseline changes to our pets. So now uh, summoning pets, it's on a really long cast time. But we do have fell domination to make it really fast as a cooldown. So that is making, you know, summoning our pets the deaths of your pets a little bit overall more meaningful. So when they die, you just don't summon another and it's whatever. So they added some meaningfulness back into the pets. But overall, that's basically the only changes that we've gotten uh, here on our base toolkit for destruction. So let's move over to talents where we have a couple of changes. So we have, these are the same, but we have soul fire. Now the new soul fire. So I'm going to use a tome here and I'm going to pop these two and I'll explain why. So we have the new soul fire. Now the new soul fire has gotten more powerful. Okay. So it's dealing a shitload of damage, really a shitload of damage. And he's also applying emulate and giving you a full soul shard. Okay. A full soul shard. Now what it's doing uh, by providing emulate, it does free you up of a GCD. So makes this ability overall overall more worth and the fact that also gives you a soul shard it also makes it a little overall more worth as it's directly fitting you say into a chaos world so it's a little bit more interesting a little bit more powerful and a little bit more valuable which is nice another thing that you can do with soul fire now is actually combine with your new roaring blades which is increasing your fire damage by 30 percent when you use conflagrate so since soul fire has a really slow tra uh, travel time what you can do is you pop soul fire and as it travels you pop a conflagrate and it will directly benefit out from that little buff which is nice you can melt some people with this now in pv scenarios this can be useful but at the same time having this really big cast time every 45 seconds i find it um not cluthersome but just kind of uh, a little bit annoying because I can just safely go for eradication where it's just something that is completely passive is going to highly benefit my damage through with my chaos bolts and so on and it's just so much simpler to use now number when we get to the numbers crunching phase maybe soul fire will be super mega good simply due to the amount of damage that he 
it pulls because it's much higher than Chaos Bolt. It does double the amount of Chaos Bolt almost, especially if you go for Roaring Blaze. But other than that, is not a super, super, super interesting ability, but it is better than before, and I do appreciate that they trying to make some of these quote unquote dead talents a little bit more interesting. Uh, now, going back to eradication, going back to eradication, there's a couple of interesting things that are uh, synergizing with eradication through your legendaries, like this one right here, which is increasing your case bolt damage by 10% and in reducing the cast time of your next Chaos Bolt by 10% for 3 seconds. So this is directly benefiting when you go Chaos Bolt back to back, which directly benefits from that Eradication playstyle. And this was, I think, was a Legion legendary, uh, Legion um, tier set effect. So obviously when you have these two together, you know, Soulfire loses more and more worth. Uh, so, but it does make Eradication a little bit more interesting. Overall, this is a pretty good legendary for you to use. You also have this one, which is kind of also synergizing well with Eradication, which is a 5% chance on Case Bolts to just refund all the Soul Shards that you've spent. So this is good, uh, good uh, overall, but especially good here with Eradication. So I just felt the need to mention that and mention those legendaries, it's these pretty cool legendaries. Um, we also have this one, which is Conflict Rate has an additional additional charge and has its cool uh, cooldown uh, cool recharge three three seconds faster. So also kind of benefits eradication. So you can put out more um, conflict rates, which mean uh, faster case bolts due to backdraft and more fragments. And it also combines reasonably well with a uh, flash over as well for even more backdrafts and some extra damage. Uh, but yeah, I, overall this legendary, I feel like it's a bit overkill. Uh, three conflict rates, even though good and useful, I think, find that two is good enough and I much rather equip something like these other two. Uh, but again, number stuff will be decided towards in a later date, just focusing on how things feel. So that is eradication, that is uh, soul fire. So in the second tier, we got we've gotten a similar treatment to Shadowburn. Now, Shadowburn now is a little bit more powerful as it's providing a 50% critical chance increase on your on uh, low health targets, okay? So it's a little bit more powerful and is making that ex execute windows, which is this is directly benefiting uh, a little bit more powerful too, a little bit better. Um, but again, the issue kind of still, still stands, it's still very situational, and it's costing one soul shard and only giving you one soul shard back, so you're not really getting anything out of this besides just damage. Uh, it's nice because you can use it on a move, you can target dungeon trash mobs really nicely, uh, but but it kind of loses a lot of worth when you go into bosses, right? It kind of loses a lot of worth there, so it, it continues to be situational. It's better, but continues to be... I think it continues to have the same issues. I think that's all that I mean. But it is better, and I like the effort put in into these two abilities to make them a little bit more meaningful and uh, a little bit more powerful. So these other two are the same. Then we have these ones all are the same. So then we get Fire and Brimstone, which again's gotten a similar treatment. It's now a little bit more powerful to to, to give you an extra extra rather soul shard fragment through your AOE, your uh, multi-targeting cleave incinerates. Now. One very cool thing about Fire and Brimstone, even though that versus Cataclysm, Cataclysm is so much more versatile, Fire and Brimstone actually gets really interesting when you, again, mix legendaries. So you get the legendary right here, which makes your incinerates generate double the amount of soul fragments, which will mean a lot more case bolts, a lot more reno fires, and that's very, very juicy. Not only that, not only that, you also get Decimating Bolt, which is a Covenant ability which you can use every 45 seconds, and it's gonna buff your next three incinerates to deal 200% more damage. Yes, 200, and the, 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 the lower the health decreases, the target decreases, the bigger this buff will get. I actually seen it go up to 350%. So what this means is that your uh, incinerates are gonna hit almost as hard as a Chaos Bolt. Almost as hard, your main target one, obviously, the other ones are going uh, to hit uh, much weaker, but you're going to hit a truckload with your incinerates, and Fire and Brimstone doesn't have a target cap. So you could be doing, at least the way it is now, this is beta, you could be doing this ridiculous amount of damage on incinerates on, say, uh, 10 mobs, right? It, it scales up really insanely. 
So that's really cool. It's really cool. Like you could say to compare it to case bolt damage, it's not that far off. It's not that far off. So yeah, this makes incinerate so much more powerful. And that was the 200% damage increase. Wasn't with the modifier where it actually increases as the health decreases on the target. So it gets even higher damage. It's even crazier. So yeah, Fire and Brimstone gets far more valuable now with this sort of synergy, with these combos of the legendary, with decimating bolts. So you're getting more damage, you're getting more fragments, which means which means all overall just more damage and more fun things happening. And I really do enjoy that. But it does get, you know, it becomes a dead talent on single target fights, which is a little bit sad. Now, Inferno also got a buff, which is providing a 20% chance to generate a soul fragment on Reign of Fires, as opposed to 10%. So a little bit more powerful, but continues to be very situational. Maybe there will be conduits directly buffing Reign of Fire as well. I'm guessing there will be, but again, a discussion on that at a later date. So this talent out of 10. Then we have our in place, which we discussed a little bit and how it synergizes really well with a soul fire. Let me just change this. With with soul fire. But the the thing with Roaring Blaze is that it's only benefiting fire damage. So it's directly benefiting benefiting your incinerate, which in combination with in decimating bolt is even more damage towards incinerate, which is nice. But it's just a single target, so it's not a huge huge deal, uh, especially when you combine with uh, when you compare to Reign of Chaos. But you know it's pretty simple, nothing too crazy, not super interesting outside of you happen to be using with Soul Fire as I said. So we have Reign of Chaos. Now Reign of Chaos is replacing your Grimoire of Supremacy. So you're no longer going to have those really big, ever-increasing Chaos Bolts, which were really fun. But instead, you're getting just more Chaos Bolts. Why? Because now, when your Infernal is active, your Soul Shards, as you spend Soul Shards, you have a 20% chance to summon an additional Infernal for 10 seconds. So 40% chance on Chaos Bolts. So, to show you that, what's going to happen is something pretty fun. As you do case vaults, you're going to have that chance of getting another Infernal. See? See the, the, the him coming? And gets really fun. Why? Because the more Infernals you get, the more Infernals you get, the more Soul Fragments you're also going to get. Which means more case vaults, which will mean more Infernals, which will mean more damage, and which will mean Crazy fun because you just got these fire boys just going crazy on the target, which I it never ceases to be amusing to me. Like on dungeons, seeing the infernals, the fire boys just going little, just going everywhere. It's really fun to be looking at. I don't know why, but I love it. Uh, now, in combination with your dark soul and stability, is essentially the same. You kind of still want to delay that a little bit because you want more infernals to come to then pop that. So about ten seconds in. Same as before, right? What I mean by that is, this is not a guide, but what I mean by that is that mechanically, in the way you're playing the spec, I don't think that's going to change at all. Um, it's still going to be the same thing, just the effect and what's happening is the same. So instead of getting bigger case bolts, you're getting more case bolts. And you get the added effect of just looking awesome with a bunch of infernals attacking your target which is very cool indeed. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I really like it. And you also have a legendary which is uh, decreasing the cooldown of some Infernal by 2 seconds per Soul Shard. So 4 seconds. And during your Infernal window, you're going to do so many uh, Chaos Bolts that you're going to reduce the cooldown really, really well. It might be possible w with this Legendary to always then, if you know, if the fight allows and you feel play well, to always combine Dark Soul with some Infernal. Maybe, but it might be possible to uh, stack these up uh, better uh, since they have a one minute difference to stack those up better. So I really like the, this uh, legendary here with um, Reign of Chaos. So, Covenant abilities. Now, I discussed um, Decimating Bolt, which is very awesome with Fire and Brimstone and uh, very awesome throughout. Uh, we uh, didn't really talk about how it functions in single target. Now, in single target, it's not a huge deal. Uh, you don't really get that feeling of just getting these really big incinerates, right? And the fact that the buff doesn't have a timer, it just stays there, you don't have to worry about it at all. Um, you just use Decimating Bolt, you continue your normal rotation, and the incinerates that you happen to use to build fragments are simply going to do more damage. So mechanically, gameplay-wise, it's not a huge deal in single target, 
you don't have to because in multi-target you kind of want to think about the ability a little bit to know what's the best moment to now to be cleave with your fire and brimstone incinerates with the submission bolt but in single target is more use it on cooldown and it, you happen to be doing more incinerate damage and that's really about it then we have impending catastrophe which is the venthyr covenant ability now this one is also not super exciting at least for now i remember conduits are not in yet for warlocks um <clears throat> what this one is providing is just an extra uh, damaging ability, so you call forth a chaotic, chaotic anima cloud that will travel to a target and it's going to deal damage in their path, so kind of like frozen orb, so you kind of want to position yourself well to maximize that damage, and when it reaches the target it explodes, dealing shadow damage and leaves a dot, plus it will apply a random curse. So there's not much to it, you want to prioritize multi-target and use it and it deals damage and that's really about it yeah it's really about it <laughs> there's nothing else nothing much else to it there's no synergy so far with your talents with your legendaries and there's really nothing going for it outside of it deals damage so we have soul rot now soul rot is an eye fake of an ability and it this feels like a waste of time for destruction it utterly feels like a waste of time for destruction so it's uh Another AoE ability where you use on a target and it will damage three additional targets and it's going to cause damage over time in the form of nature damage. Yes, nature damage. And it will also drain 20% of your health to use it, which, in which is interesting, interesting. but it will also uh, allow your next drain life to deal damage to all targets affected by your soul rot. So effectively, this is providing you a cleave drain life, like a four drain life. Aesthetically, it's pretty awesome. Mechanically, damage-wise, again, feels pretty worthless for destruction. It feels like a waste of time. Now, you do have a legendary, which is directly buffing drain life to deal uh, damage 50% faster, if I'm not mistaken. So it's buffing soul rot a lot, and it's giving you a lot of self-healing, right? It's giving you extra survivability, so maybe for PvP. I can imagine using this on BGs to be pretty goddamn fun. But for most situations, yeah, it's not super interesting. And in Affliction, it's a little bit more interesting because we do have talents that are directly also benefiting Drain Life. So that on top of Legendary, on top of this, could make it pretty powerful ability. But as it stands for Destruction, or even Demonology for that matter, uh, not super interesting. Not super interesting at all. Then we have the Curian ability, which is scoring... Now, for the sake of my monetization and due to my accent, I'm just going to call this a Tide, okay? Scoring Tide. It's going to deal arcane damage instantly and leave a dot. And as that, that dot ticks, and if the targets die while, while it's active, you're going to gain five soul shards. So it's kind of like a more powerful shadow burn. So it's going to give you, going to give you a lot of soul shards. And for dungeons, this actually feels pretty great. You can target enemies that are dying, so you can just fish for soul shards. You can just leave on targets, and it lasts for a pretty long time, so if they die, you're gonna get soul shards. You're gonna spend on more case builds, on more uh, rents of fires. So that's pretty fun. And as an added effect, as an added bonus, if the target does not die, does not die with it active, the cooldown is simply refreshed. So on bosses, it doesn't lose a lot of worth because you can just it becomes an, a dot ability that you keep up, much like emulate. So it's more interesting than the uh, other past two that we discussed. Not as interesting as Decimating Bolt, but still pretty interesting and pretty useful for dungeons. I really liked using this in dungeons. This, it felt really fun. Uh, but again, number stuff, will, I guess, will come down um, you know, later on in the beta. And again, conduits are still missing. But at least a little bit more interesting than Soul Rot and Impending Catastrophe. So, that pretty much covers our Covenant abilities. Again, Destruction is pretty much playing the same. I kind of showcase some gameplay in the background, some gameplay here on the dummies. And as you can see, it's pretty much the same. Um, obviously, not Chaos Bolts don't seem to be that big as before, uh, which I guess will upset some people, especially due to the loss of Grimoire Supremacy. But again, we're missing Conduits. There might be some Conduits directly buffing Chaos Bolt likely um as for other legendaries i pretty much mentioned all the interesting ones I, I guess i didn't mention this one which is also increasing the damage your havoc target takes by 15 percent, which is pretty useful but very situational probably something you're gonna have in your bags and change when you need to 
and yeah, these other ones, I all mentioned these other ones, yeah. You do have a couple of other ones, but they are not super interesting and they are class-wide on Warlocks. Uh, nothing that really changes your gameplay. So yeah, that pretty, again, that pretty much covers Destruction Warlock. Do let me know what you think down below. What do you like to see in Destruction Warlock? Are you upset that Chaos Bolts are not gonna hit as hard as before due to the loss of Grimoire Supremacy, due to the loss of traits, and uh, so on, stuff like that. Leave your th thoughts down below, and as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.